they will, of course, give us the cysts first. But here's the rub. This is a lot more stable than this is, right? So in this case, it's much harder for it to go from the acetate back to the starting material by 12 hours of magnitude, because this is much less, this is a much more basic low barrier of electrons than this is. But this, with the minus charge, is more stable. So what does that mean? Well, that means, whereas in this case, at normal conditions, we will not get equilibration and it will just go forward and not be as reversible. Since this, with the electron metric group, is much more stable, now under the conditions, we can go backwards. So pretty much, let me sum it up here. In this case, the equilibrium is going to favor this, and it's not going to be able to go back, and it will just go collapse to give us our cis, cis product. In this case, this really severely hindered phosphatane, it could go forward and give us product. However, it can also go back now. And since we have a big steric hindrance, it will just do the reverse reaction to go back here. And then it will go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then eventually it will filter through the more thermodynamically stable transition state. I know, Chad, I know I'm doing one specific argument, and there's two arguments for this. Is this the argument you agree with, or are you thinking of another argument? I agree with it, I was thinking of another argument. All right, I don't want to, the other argument is perhaps a bit more straightforward, but I believe in this argument. Yeah, this is more just fun. Yeah. This is fun. <laughs> I'm rhetorical. So what this means is this can go backwards. And so you know how with the equilibration with the, you know, thermodynamic kinetic addition of HC all across the diene. Eventually, if you have a, under thermodynamic conditions, we go through most thermodynamic product. Well, since we keep forming this and it goes backwards, eventually we will start to favor the trans. So eventually we'll get the trans. And let me read the trans because I can't do this lousily. <coughs> so now eventually we'll get the trans. And of course, since, sorry, eventually we'll go get the, yeah, we'll get the trans. We're now, instead of having a nitro t hero group, being right next to each other, now it's a t pyro group and a hydrogen. So this is less sterically encumbered, right? So even though this is a higher energy attack for this attacking this, uh, as seen here, so pretty much what, pretty much the attack for this would be if we flipped the steric hindrance so that the, well, let me draw. Let me draw this from scratch. So for this case, the kinetic transition state would be, where's my green for this? transition state, which will give us now the cis oxidating, which while it forms first, it's going to be much less stable. Because now we will have the T beetle and the nitro group on the same side. So what this means is, because this is less stable, and because this is a lot of a drawn group, it can go back. And the reason it can go back is because 
this negative charge on this inlet next to the electron group is much more stabilized than with an electron donating group. So whereas with an electron donating group, you can't go back. With an electron withdrawal group, the minus charge of the inlet is more stabilized, so you can go back. And then eventually, it will flip. By the way, my office hours are after class today. Eventually, it will flip, so this bond will just rotate. And so now we have the nitro group and the T-beta group on the same side. So this is a higher energy attack, right? It's a higher energy attack. But when it, when it goes into its uh, four-membered ring, the four-membered ring will now be uh, trans. Jeff. Yes. I'm sorry, did you mean the intermediate to be the stereo chemistry that I should bring? What do you mean? So this should be trans, right? Trans, trans? You're already trying to go trans? Yeah, well, oh, okay. oh wait, this is the kinetic, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Right. By the way, it's Professor Gustafson and Chuck. Sorry. Sorry. Alright, <laughs> sis. So now it will switch, and it will give us now the it will give us. So if you look at this now, if we flatten this out, now the nitro group's in the same side as the hydrogen. And the uh, nitro group is the same size as this hydrogen, and the T beta group is the same size as this hydrogen. Are trans, not cis. All right, and because cis, the steric hinders are going to be right up into each other, and the trans, they're not going to have that big steric clash. This becomes more thermodynamically stable. So this acetate is more thermodynamically stable than this. So if you have, if you have the ability to go back, i.e., an electron withdrawal group, it will go back, and then eventually funnel to the kinetically higher in energy attack of this minus charge and this carbonyl. But it gives the more thermodynamically stable oxygen, yes. Oh yeah, this can absolutely you can switch back. But then then again it just gets to this classic thermodynamic kinetic. And I'll draw an energy diagram in a second, just so let me draw the product to get out. Which is obviously gonna be the trans product. So to answer your question, what's going to happen is if we start, so this is the starting point of the reaction. It's going to be this situation. So if this is A plus B, where A is the illid and B is the aldehyde. It's going to be a lower energy attack to get to the cis uh, oxidate uh, four member ring. And it will be a higher to get to the trans. But the trans is going to be more stable than the cis. So what will end up happening is if it's an electron withdrawn group and, the, and this is more stabilized, it will be easier for the cis to go back here. And then it will keep going back forth here and here and here. And some will be keep falling down, keep falling down. The stuff that funnels to the trans is more likely to stay trans. And the stuff that goes cis is more likely to go back. And eventually, everything goes trans. Once it goes trans, it can't go back. And so eventually, everything's going to funnel through the trans. And that's going to eventually break down and give us the trans element. So take message is, 
Electron neutron groups give us thermodynamic and trans. Electron donating and electron neutral groups give us electron, uh, give us, electron neutron give us trans, electron rich, electron neutral substituent of the illid give, will give us the cis. So that's a lot of talk about that stuff. And I'm not going to go over horner rodgers Emmons because the horner rodgers Emmons is just another version of the and nothing really changes. So no horner rodgers Emmons, which is in the notes and in the, uh, in, in the book. Uh, it's just big. It's just bidding, 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 like, just like this chemistry. What I do want to talk about real quickly is how do we make these phosphorus illids? So I just spent 40 minutes talking about the various effects that phosphorus illids are getting cis or trans elements. Uh, how do we make a phosphorus illid? So the hint is, you start off making your phosphorus illid with your triphenylphosphine. Why did I draw that? So here's our triphenylphosphine. Okay. And so what do you think we, we would add the phosphorus illid into to get at least a, a, a starting material to make it up? So phosphorus illids are phosphor, phosphor, phosphori attached to, uh, attached to carbons. So what kind of reaction do you think you would do with a, with a uh, very electron rich or nucleophilic phosphine to attach to a carbon? SN2, thank you. So the way you make phosphorus illids is by doing an SN2 between your phosphine and your alkyl iodide of uh, uh, choice. So it's an electron donating or an electron withdrawn or anything. So you take your phosphine plus your your alkyl iodide or alkyl bromide, and you do an SN2. And so what you're originally will get out now. Phosphorus cation. So now we have a phosphorus with a positive charge, and then a carbon uh, that's neutral. And so since this isn't a cation, we need a counter anion. And so it kicked out I minus. So the I minus is going to act as a counter ion to counteract the positive charge in the phosphate. So this isn't an illid yet, right? We need to make the anion. How acidic do you think these hydrogens adjacent to the phosphorus are? Very Pretty acidic. I think I mentioned there are 20 to 10, depending on your substituents. And so you want to add a base. And really, in this case, any base that's really good will do. Uh, some people like to do butyl lithium. I don't like to do butyl lithium because what if you have an electron and bond group, like an ester? And our illid. What would the Buley do to an ester or an ester? It would add in the ester before, oh, it would do both. Right? It would take the proton or add in the ester. So I feel adding in butyl lithium, it works if you have an electron, uh, an electron donating group that's not going to react. And so, yeah, you definitely add Buley as your base. My favorite base is sodium hydride for this. Sodium hydride. So, sodium hydride, the conjugate. Acid of sodium hydride is H2, and H2 has a pKa of, I know I mentioned it a couple of times, I expect maybe one person to know it, 37. H2 has a pKa of 37. Am I right, Sean? Yeah. You, you knew it. Yeah. If, you're my graph, if you're my PhD student and you sit in my lecture, you know I'm going to pick on you. Uh, so yeah, so then what you do is you throw in some sodium hydride, 
and it's going to pick out one of the hydrogens to give us our ilic. So PBH3 <laughs> positive charge, then we have an R, an H, and a minus charge. So that's how you make ilics. You do an SN2 with a phosphorus, with a phosphine, and an alkyl halide. And then you just throw in your base, bule or sodium hydride. Sodium hydride is probably the safest uh, to give you your ilic. And then you throw in your aldehyde and you get your bit. Anything in chapter 16 that I haven't covered, I'm not going to go over because I don't think it's as important. I felt this really in-depth discussion of the bidding was important to give you guys an idea of what's really going on.